So, um, one of the questions that I was thinking of <clears throat> in preparation for this artist talk is what is the importance of theater arts in a ever-changing Newark? Um, there's articles posted all the time about Newark is on the rise, Newark is shifting, changing, gentrification. What is the role that theater can play in that changing Newark? And um, a part of that conversation has to be exactly who is Newark changing for, who is included in that change, and who unfortunately does not have a role in that changing Newark. And it's the responsibility of all of us to make sure that those who may not have the means or the underserved have a place, have a voice in this new Newark that is created. Now, what role theater plays in that is actually very integral because as we look at especially the young people here in a city like Newark, um, a lot of them seem to be lost as far as what their true history is, what their true identity is. And for me, um, theater has always been a source of that. It has always been an outlet to provide education and history, and it's always been a, a, um, <clears throat> a vehicle through which true identity can be um, experienced. So one of the goals of Yendor Theater Company, um, a little bit uh, about a year in, is to make sure that it is the space for people in the city of Newark to feel as if they do have a voice and they have representation. Um, we do have wonderful theater venues or wonderful venues here in the city of Newark already, uh, staples like New Jersey Performing Arts Center, and um, they do a lot of fantastic work there, a lot of wonderful concerts, uh, music events. However, what we were looking for for the Endor Theater Company was something very specific, very different, something that is reflective of people who don't always get the opportunity to speak, right. who always don't have their voices heard. That is the main goal of the Endor Theater Company. So our mission statement is to serve underserved artists and to serve underserved members of our community and use, um, use um, our platform as a vehicle to have um, a diverse set of um, writers express their voices and to give opportunities to a diverse set of artists, including actors, etc., etc. So within our first year, as Rodney touched on, uh, Yendor Theatre Company was able to do brand new works by um, David Lee Wright on mental illness, a very serious issue. Um, we presented a work on the life um, of Emmett Till uh, through the eyes of his mother, um, Mamie Till, and um, a piece on police brutality, which was actually written in response to some of the um, brutal killings uh, of last summer, including Philando Castile, among others. So as you can see, with just those three pieces, we have um, theater touching on a very particular issue that we don't necessarily talk about in the community at all, uh, mental illness. Um, we have a piece that touches on history that uh, can serve to educate, and a piece that talks about police brutality. <coughs> Most important is that the works that the Yendor Theater Company has been able to present um, are works by a diverse group of writers, writers of, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> writers of color, uh, female writers, female writers of color, um, writers from the LGBTQ community. So it's important, uh, it's important part of our mission to make sure that we feature a diverse set of voices, um, especially now as Newark is changing so much that we want to make sure that people do have a space to. Um, express that. <coughs> Additionally, as Rodney mentioned, um, on August 19th, down in the riverfront, we're going to be presenting a play called Down Neck, which is about the Newark Rebellion. And it's so timely that we are in the 50th anniversary of the Newark Rebellion, and we are sort of staging this piece. Now, the piece is written by a female writer of color from the city of Newark, so, like I said, important to give um, spotlight to a female writer, a black female writer, a writer from the city of Newark, and have that unique, authentic voice be heard and expressed. Um, and the piece actually, uh, which was actually started last March as a co-commissioned piece, um, presented as a reading at NJ Pack, um, serves the other purpose, which is to educate. Now, um, I'm an educator here in the city of Newark as well, and I actually used uh, P.S. Peace Down Neck in my classroom to teach my students about sort of how Newark got to be where it is because um, they had a lot of opinions about the city of Newark and whether their opinions are valid or not, my 
my main concern was, do you know how Newark got to where it is? Do you know where Newark has come from? And it wasn't always just like this, and this changing is sort of a, a, a rebound to what it used to be, but it's important to understand that the conditions in a city like Newark don't just happen. Right. Um, they didn't just happen um, in the wakes of the Newark Rebellion, and they, they don't just happen to the people there. Um, these conditions are the result of um, neglect on the part of former administrations, um, people who are, like I said, underserved, not getting opportunity, and um, not having access to resources. So it's very timely that this piece um, is being presented on the 19th because it is um, a very engaging piece, but it also does serve that mission to educate. In fact, uh, me and the playwright, or the playwright and I, have been talking about how do we use this piece and develop um, curriculum guides and unit plans around this so that more schools in the city of Newark can actually have access to it and can figure ways to incorporate it into their curriculum because it's an important play that can teach um, important facts about history um, as well as entertain the students enjoyed it very much so um, within within the next few months the Yendor Theatre Company plans to um, expand upon our mission of presenting works from a diverse set of writers. Additionally, we plan to um, expand upon our educational programs. Within our first year, we also presented our first Black History Month presentation at Roberto Clemente um, School. And um, as we look to expand, we're hoping to not only be able to do more presentations, but also um, perhaps more long-term residencies as well to truly engage students on the importance of theater and to engage them on exactly what lessons can be taught through the theater. And um, finally, as I'm thinking about what um, our goal is, like I said, to feature the underserved, to feature new works um, by a diverse set of writers, um, we'd love if you would follow us on social media. So we already know Yendor. Yendor is very popular. Yendor Productions, Yendor Arts, um, all the murals. But Yendor Theater Company on Facebook and Instagram, we're um, looking to sort of get our social media following up. And if you would like to use the hashtag YTC to also uh, promote Yendor Theater Company. Um, and another hashtag that I want to leave you with is hashtag diversify the canon. So uh, I went to Drew University where Rodney's a professor and um, I was an English major so I got to study some great literature. Some of the greats, I got to take some Shakespeare, and I got to um, be um, immersed in the, world, in the world of Virginia Woolf and Charles Dickens, some of the great, great greats. However, um, one of the concerns that I had as I was leaving Drew University is, all right, these guys are great, but are they truly telling the story yes, right. of all of us? Are the stories that are presented truly reflective of all of us and unfortunately in 2017 the answer is no there's not enough representation right. there's not enough diversification there's not enough presentation of true authentic voices and it's important that we give space and place for artists to present their true authentic voices um, so our hashtag diversify the canon is a, a bit of a call to action in order to do that we want to add more great works of literature to um, the canon so that more people can have access to these great works and these works are representative of an authentic voice.